Revelation, it's last book of the Bible, and turn back one book, the book of Jude. Now, I'm going to be tricky with some of you tonight, because here's what we're going to do. We're going to three different passages, and it'll be the only three passages I ask that you look at tonight. So, we're going to bookmark them. If you've got, uh, Dave McCracken likes to say, if you got got maps in the back of your Bible, just rip those out. You don't use them anyway. And you can put it there, or a piece of paper. Jude chapter number 14, or Jude chapter, Jude, and uh, verse 14, or just put a bookmark there, okay? If you got it, or a little ribbon bobby thingy, put it right in there, or a piece of paper, you can tear out, you can reach over and tear out notes your friends got right beside you, just hold your place there, then find the book of Hebrews, which is just a few pages back to the left, okay? He Either way, you can fold your pages over too, that would work. Hebrews chapter number 11. I'm, I'm tricking you tonight, but I want you just to get these so we can see them. Hebrews chapter number 11. And put a little bookmark in there as well. I know, see? But then I'm going to turn you to the last place, but you already have these marked, okay? So if you got Hebrews chapter 11, say amen. Amen. There's one person. Uh, that had not got it yet. I heard. I heard everybody was there. Now go to the book of Genesis. Hold your. You you can leave these or hold them there. The book of Genesis, chapter number five. We'll read the verses and then uh, I'm tempted to, to talk about just the uh, series we're doing. But I'll wait till I have to reach the verses. I'll pray with you. We'll be seated and we'll get preaching tonight. Uh, Genesis chapter number five. In verse number 21, just uh, four little verses we'll read. I'll pray and have you be seated. It said in Enoch, Genesis 5, 21, and Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years <laughs> and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. <laughs> for God took him. Let's pray tonight. Father, thank you so much for the ability to look into your word, and as we uh, look at this series and uh, try to see that even unnoticed, great things can happen, God, I pray you'd encourage us tonight. I pray that there be someone in our midst that is discouraged because they feel like they're unnoticed by the world. We realize and understand that, God, you notice everybody. you got a plan and a purpose for every person in this room, every person that would listen online or, God, that's in this building today. You have a plan and a purpose specifically for them. And so I pray that you'd encourage them tonight. I pray that you would uh, give liberty in your word as we preach it and teach it. God, that you give me unction and power that I don't possess on my own. I need you, God. You know that. And so I pray that you speak to hearts as only you can do. I pray that uh, you would eliminate distractions within this room. I know noise every, every which place and people beside us. But God, I pray that there be a focus solely on you and your word tonight. For you use your servant. And I ask that you would do a mighty work that cannot be done with the arm of the flesh, but yet with the Spirit of God, all things are possible. And so, Lord, we thank you and we'll praise you for what goes on today. We give you honor and all glory and all praise again. We pray this all in Jesus' holy and precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. Man, you can be seated. We have started a series called Unnoticed, Unafraid. Causing the unbelievable or creating the unbelievable on, on our YouTube channel. We uh, just, I just um, titled it Unnoticed, un, uh, Afraid, Unbelieved, the, the Unbelievable. And so what the, the focus was, in case you missed the intro, I just want to give you a quick intro. You can go back and listen to that message last week, but uh, is that uh, there's some things and people that believe they're unnoticed, they're, but they're still unafraid, and because of that, there's some unbelievable things that happen in their life because uh, they just continue to do what they're supposed to do. And uh, we, uh, going through the scriptures, this, this popped in my mind that there's so many little names. There's so many people that don't have big names and big places. There ain't, there's Davids and there's uh, there's Apostle Pauls and there's Timothys and Tituses and 
All these people that are uh, name brands in the scripture, so-called name brands in the scripture, but I want to show that there's little guys. There's people that are only mentioned a couple times in scripture, yet, man, God did some amazing things through them. And there's some amazing things that we can learn through them. We call them the unnoticed. The unnoticed, but they're they're unafraid. They're not a, they're not afraid to do what's right. They're not afraid to say what's right or or to preach what's right. And then the unbelievable things happen in their life because of that. And my goal is this: you ready? And my my, my thought process and my prayers is that through this you would understand that you can go unnoticed in the sight of men, but not unnoticed in the sight of God. And if you're unafraid and unashamed, that you will see unbelievable. Look, we will see the unbelievable happen. In our midst. I believe that can happen. I believe that happened in your family. I believe that can, that can happen in your school. I believe that can happen in our everyday lives, at your job, uh, as you're on a bus. There could be some unbelievable things happen just because you say, it doesn't matter if I have a name. It doesn't matter if everybody knows me. I'm just going to do what God has called me to do. As a preacher once said, that if you are in the will of God, you are immortal. You can't be killed. You say, what? Yeah, yeah. If you're in the will of God, it's God that's going to take you. There ain't a thing that anyone else can do. And so I, I just want to encourage us, man. I just thought, what, the, what a series this is. But tonight we're looking at this guy named Enoch. Now, Enoch is not something that, a name that we have never heard before. In fact, how many of you ever heard that name Enoch before this day? See, quite a few of you. But there's some that haven't. And what's interesting to me is Enoch, the name means dedicated initiator to train up. That's what that, that means. I think I wrote that on the paper. Or this name that was only mentioned 11 times in Scripture. 11 times in Scripture, Enoch is, is mentioned, that name. Two of these times is another Enoch. In Genesis chapter number 4, it's another name. It's another person. So this Enoch that we're talking about is only mentioned nine times in Scripture. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, nine times. And I've got eight pages of notes about Enoch. You know, I, I don't know if it's eight, but there's a bunch. And so, nine times of this specific Enoch in Scripture, listen to this, five times is talking about his lineage. So you know all the begets you skip when you read your Bible? You know what I'm saying? You know, you da da beget, da da and you're just like, oh, okay, I'm just going to wait till the begets are done. I'm gonna... that, five of those times he's mentioned in Scripture is just talking about his lineage. One of them is in the New Testament. And so, if we were just looking at the life, or we're just discussing his life and what happened in his life, there's only four times that his name's mentioned where he discusses Enoch and what he's done. And yet, man, there's some unbelievable things. Probably heard of it. Why? Because uh, there's some unbelievable things that happened to him. And so, uh, this what, what happened to him that made this so great? Why is Enoch so great? And here's our intro tonight, number one on your paper Number one, he talked with God. You're in, you're in Genesis. Go to the book of Jude. Go to the book of Jude. I had you mark it for a reason. <clears throat> we'll be back in Genesis. So save your place in Genesis. But go back to Jude now. You sure already have a mark. He, he talked with God. Now that's amazing. I don't know if you realize, but that's amazing. That he talked with God. He had a personal conversation with God. How do I know that? Look at Jude chapter number one. Please. Ah, right, there we go. In verse 14, everybody got their Bibles out? Watch what it says. And Enoch also, there's the name, the seventh from Adam. See, the Bible does not want you to get confused with the other Enoch, which we'll talk about in, here in a, a few minutes. But he said, Enoch, the seventh from Adam. This Enoch that we're discussing tonight, this dedicated, this initiated, this trained up, that's what his name means. This Enoch, the seventh from Adam, he prophesied of these. Watch what it says. Saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches with ungodly sinners have spoken against them. I think you like preaching about ungodly stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> ungodly mentioned five times in that verse, I think. But Enoch, it said he prophesied. Well, how in the world do you get a prophecy if God ain't speaking to you? You see that? He talked with God. He had a one-in-one -one conversation that there was a revelation, watch this, of the coming judgment of this world. The second coming of Jesus with his saints, Enoch, saw. Now watch this. That was 2,000 years before the birth of Christ, somewhere around in there. But Revelation, if you, you look at the book of Revelation, 
That was almost 2,000 years ago from where we are now. Enoch was alive approximately, we don't really know the time, approximately 2,000 years before Revelation ever started and told us about the second coming. Watch and watch. Enoch said, oh, I've seen it. Oh, I've heard from God. I've talked with God. Uh, Enoch was given a word from God 2,000 years before Revelation. He was so, watch this, in tune with God, so close to him that he received something that even Abraham wasn't recorded as knowing. You know the great Abraham? Y'all hear this? Abraham? Y'all know Abraham? Yeah. A man who's son? So you've all heard his name, right? And never recorded that Abraham had been given by God, even though he said he were a friend of God. It never says that Abraham got that he uh, got a prophecy that Jesus was coming back with ten thousand of the saints. And never said Moses. And we just got to read through that in Exodus. If you're following the Bible encounter, it said he spoke to God face to face. His face glue as he got there talking with God. That's not a word. Glowed. 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 It glowed. Glowed. There we go. Glowed. Thank you, my wife. I love you. But anyway, it glowed. That's right. It glowed. Glue. I'm just trying to help you out to say stuff quicker. Glue and glow. See, you just saved a half a second. Glue right there. But it glowed after he came down. It said he didn't eat for 40 days or drink for 40 days and 40 nights when he was up. He, man, he, he got the Ten Commandments. He got all this stuff that God showed him that he had. Moses, the prophet that all these Pharisees and Sadducees and all these people say, that's our man. He didn't get a word that, that the Lord was coming with 10,000 of the saints. It's amazing to me that his Enoch talked with God. Could you imagine so being so close to God that he speaks to you directly? Could you imagine that? Hebrews chapter 1 verse uh, number 1 through 2 says, God at sundry times and in diverse manners hath in the past spoken unto us by the prophets. I mean, he says, listen, he said, in the past God spoke to us by telling other people what to tell all the people. He would tell one man, hey, you need to do this and you need to do that. Uh, children of Israel, children of America, children of Bible Baptist Church, teens, adults, whatever. He would take one man and say, I want to show you this. But he said this in verse 2, listen. He said, but in these last days, that these days has spoken to us by his son. And you say, well, Jesus ain't here, I know. But word incarnate is Jesus Christ. The word of God is how God wants to speak to us. As I said last week, if you want to hear God, man, read the Bible. If you want to hear an audible voice, read it out loud. Mm -hmm. That This is God's revelation to us. And could you imagine being so close to God that you read and something uh, uh, just speaks to you. And God speaks to you directly. Let me give you an example. We're reading through Exodus right now. And I, mean, I was reading through there the other day. And uh, something just, spoke, just stuck out to me. And I've been reading through the Bible reading calendar. Same what we're doing now. For at least 17 years. I've read it through it every year for 17 years. Read the same thing over and over. And then I doubled up and went back and different things. I read through Exodus. And you know what I found out this week in Exodus? You ready for this? It said that God wrote on the tablets, the stone tablets, on the front and the back. Mind blown. I know. <laughs> God doesn't waste paper. He writes on the front and the back of everything. But he wrote on the front and back. I'm like, that's so awesome. I'm reading this at maybe 5, 5.15 in the morning. I'm reading through it. I'm like, God, we're on both sides of the tablet. That's awesome. And Ellie came down the stairs and said, man, did you read that? Did you read Exodus? I'm like, yeah. I said, man, you know what's awesome? God, we're on the front back. She goes, God, show me the same thing. And I'm like, that's awesome. Because that was the same God. Speaking to the same people, and believe me, I'm not smart. She may be smart enough, I'm not smart enough to get that. What is that? That is God speaking directly to the same two people and showing the same two people the same two things. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Being so, and I'm not, I'm not trying to say we're close to God or anything, but listen, man, when you read the Word of God, there ought to be something that sticks out at you. Man, I gotta, I gotta preach a message on uh, uh, that we see tonight was uh, I'm more. I am more God just he speaks to me. He speaks to you. But sometimes we're not silent enough. Sometimes we're distracted by other things. I don't know what would cause, but man, could you imagine being so close to God that he talks to you? That's why I love the hears. That you guys get involved with saying, God speak to me. 
Hey, you, you have trouble with these here sometimes? You say, I read through the chapter and nothing happens. Man, hey, before you do it next time, before you go to sleep tonight and you read Philippians chapter 4, instead of just reading Philippians chapter 4, say this, God would just speak to me. Because one thing God wants to do in his word is he wants to speak to you. Come on now. I know it's hot in here, but man, give me some fire and amens or something, you know. Hey, amen. But he wants to speak to you. But Enoch, he talked with God. Amazing unbelievable that he would speak to God and God would give him a revelation that would not yet take place 4,000 years later. Right now, it's never, it hadn't taken place yet, but it will. He talked with God. Number two, write this down. He was translated to God. He was translated to God. Go to Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11. He was translated to God. He talked with God, but he was also translated to God. Now, translation... <clears throat> When we say translation, it's typical that we think about uh, uh, English to Spanish. And I know a little bit of Spanish. I just put the O at the end of every word I say, right? And that translated. No, that don't work. I, you know, I don't. But a translation, that's what we think of. But this translated means to transfer, to exchange, or to change sides. This is, listen, this is the unbelievable things that happened to Enoch. He talked with God, then he was translated to God. Look at Hebrews chapter number 5. It says, by faith, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. Did I say chapter 5? Yeah. I'm sorry. Hebrews 11, verse 5. It says, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had, tra had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. It said he was translated to God. He was transferred to God. He exchanged to God. He changed sides to God. He didn't see death. Oh, hallelujah, wouldn't that be awesome? He didn't taste death. Jesus Christ tasted death. The Son of God. God in flesh. God that put blood in His body and flesh on Him. He tasted death, but Enoch didn't taste death. He didn't see it. But the unbelievable truth that Enoch was translated, he was transferred, he was, he was exchanged, he changed sides. This life, guys, listen, you're going to have headaches mm -hmm. in this life. Come on now, you're going to have headaches. <clears throat> you're going to have heartaches. Yeah. I remember when I had a heartache when I was a, a, just a, a wee lad. <laughs> <laughs> when I was just a wee lad. Man, I remember on my porch crying. You say, what over? Many business. All right. <laughs> Many business. But I'm like, ah, I was stupid. I was crying away. And I went like, oh, you deserve that. I shouldn't have been crying. I should have been sucking it up, buttercup. All right. That's what I should be doing. And I remember my dad, who is not a, he is not a guy that likes to, it's okay, son. You know, he's the guy that, if I'm crying, he's like, dude, you are a wimp. You know, that, that was my dad. Not now. Now he's like a soft heart and all that. But I remember him coming out and putting his hand on my shoulder and be like, it's all right. I thought, man, that's awesome. You know, I, I just always remember that my whole life. But, no, he didn't kick my dog, I promise you. Yeah. But it's going to have heartaches. It's going to have headaches. Hey, you're going to have hurts. You will see people die. You'll see people suffer. You may go through pain and agony. But God exchanged those things in Enoch for a place that has none. You all hear me? God exchanged... Those things. He translated those things. He took Enoch out. Now I want you all to see this. I'm going to do this a little later. But the average age at this day and age was 929 years old. Enoch died when he was 365. I mean, he, he only lived a third of the life on this earth. You think, well, man, I kind of like to live longer. You want to live on this earth 900 years, you go right out. And I'm ready at about 80, you know. Go and tell you, you say, well, don't you want to see him? Yeah, well, I'm trying to get all my, the people around me saved so that I see him again. I'll see him for eternity. But get me out of this world, man. The aches, the pains, the headaches, the death, the suffering, all those things, man. I don't, I don't want to see him anymore. I don't like to see him anymore. And Enoch, God said, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to exchange you. I'm going to take, I'm going to translate you out of this world a third of the life that everyone else had. It's unbelievable. He changed sides. He tra he transported. I couldn't help but think of beam me up, Scotty. And I don't know how he took him out of here. I know he took Elijah out of here, but I don't know how he took Enoch out of here. But it'd be pretty cool when I get to heaven and see that scene, and he's just like, 
Come on up. And he actually beams him up. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah! You know, he beams him. He transports him. He changed sides. Listen, he went from the losing team to the winning one. He changed sides. He went from the losing team to the winning one. Right before the judgment of the flood. The flood, it ain't just a few hundred years and the floods upon the earth. Right before judgment, he changed sides. He went from losing to winning. Unbelievable that we could too. Maybe not literally. We may not be able to translate up, although the rapture will happen one day. But we can see the beauty in the ashes of this life. <clears throat> that no matter what may happen to us, no matter what the heartaches or the headaches we can say, I'm going to translate myself and see a heavenly purpose behind everything that happens in this life. There may be some things that happen that burn us up. There may be some things that happen that knock us down. There may be some things that happen that you think, why am I following this Christ? But God said, I can translate you out of it. Yeah. He may not take us up physically, but we could see the beauty of it. It's not realistic that I would just... Uh, just be transported or, or get out of a hard times or man, uh, that God would uh, move in these instances. That's not realistic that God would really do that when I'm still here on earth. Yeah, it's not, but it's unbelievable that he would. Mm -hmm. That you can go, guys, listen, you're going to go through something in this life. Y'all hear me tonight? Come on. Are you still awake? Yeah. All right, I, know it's, I know it's warm in here. I'm getting a little toasty too, but listen, you can go through some tough things in life and it's unbelievable that through that toughness, through the, the hard things of life, God says, I'll give you the grace to get through it. And you'll look on the other side and say, how in the world did I get through it? Like Amen. It's not realistic, but with God, all things are possible. You see, he's translated to God. He was talking with God. He was translated. You see, unbelievable things that happened in Enoch's life. Hey, look at me. These are the unbelievable things that happened to you and me. That's the point. You can talk with God. Amen. Oh, you can talk with God. Come on now. You can translate to God. You can say, look, there's a heavenly purpose. I, I'm not going to just be stuck on earth. Number three, write this down. He was taken by God. He was taken by God. Go to Genesis chapter number five again. Genesis chapter number five. <clears throat> not only was he translated to God, but he said he was taken by God. He was taken by God. We're going to flip right back. I tried to flip three and four. But it didn't work, because, but there it is. It was taken by God. Genesis 5.24 says this, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. <laughs> he, was, he was taken by God. And so, uh, when it was all said and done, God took Enoch. He was no longer a part of this world, no longer able to be tempted, to be trapped, to be troubled by the things going on here. He didn't have to worry about it. He didn't have to say, oh no, there's things going on with Russia and Ukraine. There's things going on with uh, the United States. And oh my goodness, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen here? God said, oh, no, I'll just take you on out of that. He didn't have to worry about that. He didn't have to look back at heaven. By the way, when you get up in heaven, I don't think you're going to care much about what goes on down here. Yeah. I had a mama that went to heaven over three years ago. People were like, oh, is your mom looking down? I'm like, if mom's looking down, she's crazy. I wouldn't want to look back down on here. I'll see you in a little bit, mama, but go ahead and enjoy heaven, man. Go ahead and enjoy that. Enoch, he was taken. God took him. And then when he was, he was out of this trouble, out of temptation, listen, we have a desire to stay here. I mean, I don't think anybody's like, I wish I died tomorrow. Right? I hope not anyway. Come on now, give me an amen. I don't know, you know, yeah. We have a desire to stay here. There's some desire to say, you know, I, I, I want to be around my friends. I want to be around my family. Paul struggled with this. Philippians chapter number one, Paul says, I have a desire to depart for Christ, which is far better, but to stay is needful for you. See, he, he had a desire to stay and be a part of the things of God, to be around the church of God. But he also said, you know, to go with Christ is far better, but there's this desire. I want to stay here, but I get heaven. I I want to be with my Lord, but the unbelievable is that we can live here. You hear me? We can live here and be taken by God. Say, so wait a minute, wait a minute. He took Enoch. I know, but we can be taken by God. Captivated. You ever hear the phrase, taken by surprise? You hear of that? They were, what, what, did they, what does it mean by that? They were, it was just unbelievable to them that they were taken back 
by what was happening. And we could be so involved with the things of God. We could be so united with the plan of God. We're not captivated by the lusts and desires of the flesh, but we're captivated, captivated by the things of God. We're captivated by the scriptures. Take, they take us. <clears throat> this morning I was studying and I do some Bible reading in the morning about 5 to, um, I pray in the morning about 5 o'clock. I try to study, make sure I'm awake, so I try to do some push-ups and drink some coffee because I don't want to fall asleep reading my Bible. So I try to do some of that stuff, just get warmed up a little bit and Start studying this lesson about 20 till uh, 6, about 20 till 6, and um, I was just kind of studying a little bit, and I went out, and just kind of walked around a little bit, and came back about 6 o'clock, and I told my wife this this morning, from 6 to 7, I don't even know where that hour went. I didn't fall asleep. I know some of you are thinking, you're like, you fell asleep and woke up. No, I didn't fall asleep. I, I got my word. And just, t I didn't look at my watch, I didn't look at my phone, I didn't look at anything. I just started writing down some notes, writing down some things that God was putting on my heart, flipping through the scriptures, flipping through some of these things, and an hour went by, and I didn't even know it. And I came out, and I said, man, we're reading about Moses being up in the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights without food and water. You're like, how can that happen? Boy, when you get captivated by God and his word, you know exactly how that can happen. When you're reading along, you say, I've never experienced that. Just read it a little more, you will. Just get alone, get it by yourself, turn your phone off, turn everything off, put it all away, put the clocks away, and start diving into his word. All of a sudden, you'll be taken by God, and God will start to speak to you, and time will go by, and I think, I thought, I, I don't even know where it went. I felt like 10, 15 minutes went by, and I hear my kids up. I'm like, what are they doing up at 6, 15 in the morning? 6.30 in the morning, what is going on? So I opened the door up, I'm like, what's going on? I went like this, my watch, I said, it's 7 o'clock? Are you kidding me? The preciousness of just being in the presence of God, time, that doesn't matter then. And you'll be taken by Him. You'll be taken by prayers answered. Man, when you get some prayers answered in your life, you'll pray more. I just wonder if you're praying enough to get them answered. Remember, um, and I don't mean to put them on the spot, but remember Cole, we would pray every single Wednesday when we take prayer requests for people that he works for from the church. Y'all remember that? I remember that because I still do. And he would bring in some people that come to church or go work with him. Ben, do you work with him? Yeah. Does ben, ben didn't know that he's an answer to prayer, but he's an answer to prayer. Now, right? And so, what is that all about? There's a taken. There's like, I can't do anything about you. Invite someone. I want someone to be saved. And I, I, I want to learn more scriptures. And you say, well, what do I do when nothing else happens? Well, I'm telling you, prayer works. We can't do everything. You see, you've done everything. I've invited them. I've done everything. I want the scriptures to speak to me. There's times that we need just to say, but I need to be taken by prayer. And the prayer will be answered. And then the souls of men you're taken by. It. When you walk through the stores, <coughs> and you walk and you drive down the street, and you see the souls of men and you realize that people aren't saved and that they're going, they're dying and going to a devil's hell without Jesus Christ, you'll be taken by it. Enoch was taken by God. Taken by God. Taken by his goodness. Do you know God's good tonight? Come on, God's good tonight. God is awesome. Yeah. He's awesome. I'm taken back, and you should be too, by his amazement. Enoch talked with God. This is the unbelievable things that happened. Hey. That can happen to you. You can talk with God. He was translated to God. He was taken by God. And number four, write this down. His testimony was about God. Hebrews chapter 11. Go back there. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11. His testimony was about God. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse 5. <clears throat> One of the great things about preaching about little people in the Bible and not a lot of names is... You got to turn very many places. <laughs> there are only a, a couple spaces. And so, but man, it gets some unbelievable things. Is that not unbelievable? Yeah. So Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5 says this, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this, and there it is, testimony that he pleased God. Mm -hmm. What unbelievable is the fact we don't know much about Enoch at all? I mean, you read these scriptures, we've read everything we know about it. Everything I've, I've mentioned, that's, there's one verse in Matthew that tells his lineage, don't tell anything about him. 
We have read everything we know about this, that the scripture gives us about Enoch, his life, what he specifically did. We don't know a lot about his specifics, except what it tells us, but what we do know shows us that it isn't about our achievements, but about our God being able to do something through us. It said he had this testimony that he pleased God. His testimony Enoch had was about God's goodness and abilities, not Enoch's awesomeness. You don't read anything about there about Enoch being a sports star. You don't read anything in there about Enoch being this high-level person in society. He didn't say he was rich. He didn't say he was wealthy. He didn't say he had a lot of friends, that his family was good off. It just gives a lineage. And later on, you find the man Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But Enoch, his testimony was about the God of heaven. His abilities, not Enoch's, but God's awesomeness. It's all about you. Listen. With men, it's impossible, but with God, what? And so there's a testimony that it was about God. That in the end, people saw Enoch, not as Enoch, but listen, he's seen Enoch as a man of God. His testimony was about God. That's unbelievable to me. So watch this. How can these things happen to us? In my mind, I think... If I'm going to be unnoticed, unafraid, and have unbelievable things happen to me, and I want to see God talk to me, I want to be translated to God, I want to be taken by God, I want my testimony to be about God, I don't, I don't want people to know my name, because my name's supposed to be small, we're supposed to be unnoticed. The world's not supposed to notice us, God's supposed to take us up out of the horrible pit, and out of the mire clay, and set our feet upon the rock, and use the weak things to confound the strong, the base things to confound that which is mighty. He's supposed to do those things with the unnoticed people of the world, just like you and me. We may never have a name, but may we have some unbelievable things. We can talk with God, the God of heaven who knows every name. You may not be known in your school, you may not be known in the world, but man, you're known by God. He can do some unbelievable things with you. If you just say, I'm unnoticed, but I'm unafraid, I mean, the unbel some unbelievable things will happen to me. So how did Enoch have these unbelievable things? Three things tonight. <clears throat> Number one, he had his family changed. He had his family changed. Go to Genesis chapter 4. This is going to be really quick. I promise you. I just want you to see this. He had his family changed. Hey, listen to me tonight. There ain't nothing that's really going to happen to you unless your family is changed. Now, you remember this? Uh, I said that there was two times that the name Enoch was mentioned in Scripture, but wasn't talking about the Enoch we're talking about tonight. Remember that? Watch this. <clears throat> this is what caught me today. My voice is, for some reason, going. Genesis 4. <clears throat> Boy, the spit's really going on now. <clears throat> Verse 17. And I, I'm going to do this very quickly, so you got to listen quickly, Okay. Verse 17, chapter 4, verse 17 says, And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare, what's that name? Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but Cain was a wicked man. There was two, two lines that we see uh, pan out in Genesis. The line of Cain and the line of Seth. We're going through that in Sunday school right now. The line of Seth, Seth it says, Men began to call upon the name of the Lord. That Seth was the godly line, Cain was the ungodly line. And in Genesis chapter 6, when they come together, it says the wickedness of man was great. Because the godly and the ungodly, they got together. And when that happens, the godly never turn out right. And so what we see is Cain naming his son Enoch. Cain named the ungodly line of men. Seth was representing the holy or the godly line. Even though these are two different men, two Enochs, watch. The thought occurred to me today, as I was just reading this and thinking about this, the godly Enoch was different because he was godly. I know. Deep. Theological. But the godly, line, the godly Enoch was different because he was godly. And he didn't let the first name dictate how, it, dictate how he turned out. Just think about this. You never want to name your, name, your, your daughter Jezebel. <laughs> Right? No one wants to her. Don't ever name your son Judas Iscariot. Right? You're like, why not? Well, I, I, if I have to explain it, you don't really want to. But wh why? Because that name has muddled it. That name has, there's something about it that you don't want other people to look at you and say, you're a Jezebel? 
<laughs> that would never be good. Uh, you're a, you're a, you're a Judas Iscariot, uh, dude. Uh, who are you? Why? There's 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 a there's a, there's a shame to that name. But watch, this is what got to me. That it turns out that this Enoch said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to say, oh, just because he's ungodly, just because his name is in the ungodly line, that somehow I have to turn out the same way. See, listen, before you're in the family of God, John 8, 44 says you're of your father, the devil. <coughs> you are in the devil's family. And I don't know if you know this or not, but the devil's not a very good dad. He doesn't care about his children. He wants you to die because you are in the image of God. Uh, that's John 8, 44. Romans 8, 14 says, But as many as are led by the Spirit of God, we are the sons of God. 2 Corinthians, listen to me, 6, 17 through 18 says, We are to come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And verse 18 says, And I will be your God. And we have a chance to come out of a, of a hell-bound family into a heaven-bound one. Amen. And we can change families. Our families can be changed. We can and will do and have unbelievable things happen to us, no matter how unnoticed we are. But we have to change families. You can't stay in the same family. Listen, you can't stay unsaved and think that unbelievable things are going to happen to you. Amen. There's got to be a change in your families. Enoch, he didn't let the past name say, I'm going to make it. Oh, he's, he's ungodly. If that was an ungodly Enoch. That's just going to be my name the rest of my life. No, no, no. He did something about it. And he said, I'm not going to let his name dictate how I'm going to live. He changed families. I'm not let that past dictate him. Hey, you may not have a good home life. Some of you may. Some of you may not. Your parents may not say you're doing good by going to church. Your parents may not say you're doing good by reading your Bible. You may not go home and be encouraged to read your Bible. If you do, you ought to praise God every day. You do, but you may not have that. You may have a past that has drugs, booze, you have some sexual sins, there's some pride in you, but you can make a better name for yourself in the eyes of God. You can have a family change. You can have your name change. You don't have... To continue, listen, you don't have to continue down that road. You can change. You can say, well, it was, it was in my past. My dad did it. My grandpa did it. You don't have to. That's the power of Christ in us. But you got to change the family. See, there's a family that's changed. And unbelievable things happen to Enoch because there was a family change. And he said, I'm going to make sure my name. And when we say Enoch, no one ever thinks of the ungodly line of Cain. Instead, they say it's the Enoch. That was translated that he pleased God. Number two, not only you got your family changed, number two, your faith challenge. Your faith challenge. Okay, this is awesome. You're in Genesis chapter number five. <clears throat> if you read through this, I don't have a lot of time, so listen, listen close. The average age, I've already said this. Now, I'm doing a little math here, so don't go bored on me. The average age that people die in this lineage, I just counted the lineage, not counting Enoch. The average age that they died was 926 years old. I already said that. Enoch died at 365 years. You're like, well, that's a lot of years. I know. But if you take the percentage, I already did the math for you, so you don't have to right here, and you put it in our day and age where the average pe person dies at 80 years old, Enoch died at 31 years old. 31 years old is when Enoch died. So if you did said the average age person dies at 80 years old, that means I'm already dead. I'm 41. I know I look like 31, but I'm 41. There's a bunch of people dead in here, right? There's not a bunch, but there's a few of us. You say, well, I'm not 31. Yeah, I know, but watch this. <coughs> Genesis, in, in Genesis um, chapter number five, look at this. Verse 22, it says, Enoch walked with God after he began Methuselah 300 years. So listen to me. Ready? You got to get this point. He wasn't walking with God when he was 365. It said he was walking with God when he was 65. And if you did that math today, that means he started serving Jesus, started serving the God of heaven. If that's when he started walking with him, when he was six or seven years old. And he walked with God his entire life. 
He didn't stop. He died when he was 31, but he didn't stop. He said, six or seven, I'm going to focus. And now I believe that at six or seven years, how does a little kid do that? Because they had a family that nurtured him. You say, I don't have a family that nurtured you. Yes, you do. You have the family of God that nurtured you. That's what's great about a church. That's what's great about coming together. That's what you say, I don't get it at home. I know, but come here. We'll help you. We'll get in the scriptures. We'll start Bible study. We'll start discipleship. Your family has changed. You are in the family of God. But Enoch, man, at six or seven, but this is what got me. Listen, his name is dedicated. means that he was trained up. He was faithful. He was hand in hand with God. He was step by step with God. He made sure he was sold out to God, dedicated to him, walking with him. And then he was challenged. Because listen to this. At Genesis chapter six, verse five, it said there was only evil continually in the heart of man. I don't believe, listen, I don't believe that the evil that started, or the evil that was there in Genesis 6-5 started in Genesis 6-5. Yeah. I think the evil started years before. And watch, I believe this. Can't prove it with scripture, but just a thought that came to my heart. That about the time that Enoch was living was when people decided they were either going to live for God or they weren't going to live for God. They decided that I'm going to go on the evil path, and that's where it ended up. Because in the end, hey, listen to me, in the end, there was only one man on the earth. God said, you are well pleasing. And it was in the line of Enoch, a man named Noah. And I believe at that point, when things started to go away, or when things started to go uh, uh, just splitting, where there was godly and ungodly, Enoch said, I'm going to decide right now that I'm going to do that which is right. I'm not going to turn. I'm not going to turn away. I'm going to do what's right and good. Enoch was around all these wickedness, all these things. All, when it began to happen, people began to turn away from godly to ungodly. But Enoch's faith was challenged. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5 said he pleased God. Guys, you listen to this. Ready? That word please God means to gratify entirely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Maybe you didn't hear me because, man, I, I don't know. That, that just blew me away, that right? To please God means to gratify entirely. He gratified God entirely with who he was. And then he was challenged. What way would he go? Can you say, I'll be faithful to Christ forever? Can you say, I'm going to live for Jesus no matter what? Enoch did. Six or seven, he said, in our age, I'm going to live for God. If the, if the, if the world goes wicked, I'm still going to live for God. What if a boyfriend or girlfriend says, ah, I don't really want you reading that Bible. What if a job takes you away? What if no one else is? What if a job takes you away? What if no one else wants to? What if family or friends fall away? What if something bad happens in your life? Are you going to choose even though your faith will be challenged because the unbelievable happens after the challenge of your faith, not before. So I don't want to go through this. It's, I don't want to challenge my faith. I think God's got to challenge your faith. He challenged Enoch's. And in the end, God got, he got taken. In the end, there were some unbelievable things done to Enoch because even though he was unnoticed, even though he was unafraid, there were some unbelievable things that happened to him because his faith was challenged. Number three tonight, I must hasten. Number three, he was found continuing. He was found continuing. Good. Hebrews chapter number 11. Back there. We'll be done. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter number 11. He was found continuing. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter number 11. This, this phrase got me. And I know where I'm at. I hear it upstairs. But listen. Verse, verse 5 says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he has testimony that he pleased God. He was found continuing. Now that word said he was not found, but listen to this. He made the decision to live for God, but that was just the start. Now watch this. You in this room, and I pray some of you do. Some of you may not take it serious enough on a Wednesday, but man, I hope some of you do. That you say, tonight is going to be the night that I'm going to, I'm going to say, God, this is it. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to be an Enoch. I'm going to start now, and I'm never going to give up. But do you realize that's just the start? It says, he was not found. But where was he not found? He was not found in the world. Do you understand that? But they went looking for him, and he was not found. Hey, where's he not today? I don't know. I searched all over the place. Man, that dude is gone, man. He ain't anywhere to be found. But he was not 
found 300 years he was under a microscope. This is what I thought of. You ever play hide and seek? Genesis chapter 5 verse 24 said he was not. The Hebrew said he was not found. Genesis said he was not. Now if you play hide and seek, you're under, people are seeking you out. So the Bible uses the word found because I think under for 300 years, when people started to go ungodly, people started to watch it. I'm not living that way. Or oh, really, let's see. They started to put him underneath a microscope. And as the people of the earth were declining morally, the ones that weren't doing it too were standing out. You want to stand out. This, you ready? You're either going to fit in or you're going to be found. Hmm. You're either going to fit in. You hear me, team? You're either going to fit in or you're going to be found. They're going to say, there's that one as they did Peter. Your speech parade you. They told Peter, you sound like a follower of Jesus. And you know what Peter did? He fit in. He started cursing and swearing, the Bible said. <laughs> so you're either going to fit in or you're going to be found. They're going to say, you're one of those guys. Are you ready for that? Enoch did unbelievable things, not because he fit in, but because he was found out. And because of this, God rescued him from the judgment to come. Listen to this verse. Proverbs chapter 11. Let's do this, teenager. I'm almost done. Proverbs 11 verse 8 says, The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. The righteous are delivered. God says, I will deliver the righteous out of trouble, and instead of that trouble that was going to come on them, I will take the wicked, the people that don't believe, the people that are living in the world and of the world, and I will put them in that place. That's what that verse says. Don't be found in the world. No. Don't be found without morals in this wicked and evil age. As the age of men decline, as this age of men's decline morally, listen, you will need to make a choice or a decision to fit in or be found out. Because one of these think one of these days you'll be found out you're a Christian. If you are one. One of these days you'll find out you love the Bible. One day you'll, you'll go find out that you pray and it works. One day you'll go find out that you go to church. You'll be found out. But listen to this. Consider what I say. Consider what Enoch, he was not as well. What was he not? Well, he was not at parties. Now I know it said he was not. That means he was translated. But listen, he was not at parties. Yeah. Boy, got quiet here. I feel like I just sucked something out of the room right there. He was not at parties. He was not dressing ungodly. Yep. Oh, come on now. Don't claim up on me. I'm almost done. They were, they were not dressing ungodly. Amen. He, he was not piercing his body. Oh, I went there because that's okay. I do it all the time. Uh, not to, Christian. That is not a, a thing that Bible says go do. Can't find it in here. He was not what? Not, he was not drinking. He was not drugging. He was not lying. Stealing, smoking, or chewing, or hanging around with those that doing, or something like that, right? He was not a part. What? He was not a part of the desires of the flesh, but had a love beyond this world. Mm -hmm. A love beyond this world. And watch, he was found continuing, no matter what was happening around him. And if you're going to reach your friends, if you're going, to, guys, I know it. it it is not cool not to fit in. But you're going to do one, two, you're going to be fit in, or they're going to find out who you are. And you say, well, I don't want them to find out who I are. Who I are. <laughs> the only hope that this world has is in you and me. If they, they see themselves in you, what hope do they have to come to you and say, you need hope? The only hope that the world has is the person of Jesus Christ. Hey, you need to have your family changed tonight. Have your family changed. Be found out. Be found continually. Let's be emails. Have some unbelievable things happen. Every head down, every eye closed in the house of God tonight. Thank you, Father, for the blessing of preaching.